Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. We are now in a new batch of special selections, and I couldn't be more excited, honestly. Um, I've really enjoyed what we've checked out so far in special selections, but I'm not going to lie. It was a bit of a burden having those 140 requests hanging over me, knowing I had to get through them all. And it's just nice to know that the special selections are open again. You can submit the songs you want me to check out. Links are in the description if you're interested in that. And uh, that we can move on to a new batch that wasn't requested half a year ago. So, with that said, today's special selection comes at us from Terra Nekla. And this link takes us to a video game soundtrack, actually. Um, this is from the Toho Project, and this is the 17th game in the project. Um, I've, I've had a little bit of this explained to me, and I did a little bit of research myself. Um, and yeah, so this is one of the songs off of the 17th game in this series, this Toho series. Um, and the song is called Entrusting This World to Idols, or Idolatry's World. All right, so this is the stage six boss theme. Let's get into it. Yeah, really nice rhythmic space here. those offbeats and that fast tempo, a shift to piano, very adventurous. Yeah, nice little, an offbeat like punk ska thing underneath this wild. It's interesting the energy that the chiptune-esque sound give to the piano and electric guitar sounds. Ah, interesting rhythmic break. So that offbeat rhythm mixed with the small tempo shift made that feel real weird. Yeah, so I like how they chose to go loop based and have a pattern, but then they also Add in these little embellishments to change up each repetition a little. Take it down an octave. Yeah, I love those little grace notes. Piano's still killing it back there. So much drive because it goes off the hi hat so a little bit of variation on the theme, passing it off to a new instrument. We 
lost a little bit of that adventurous edge and there's some danger present now. Breaks to almost a uh, solo piano is just kind of. It kills me. It's so out of nowhere. Yeah. Taking that piano line, harmonizing it, but giving it its own spin. Yeah, there's tons of theme in this track. saw those in the trumpets as they did the uh, the half valve slides and in there instead because you know keyboards can't do a slide it's they're kind of a percussive instrument um, but you get these nice little you know finger rolls up and uh, it kind of gives the same effect while uh, you know having its own little flare on it um, so yeah uh, there is a lot of repetition in it, but that makes sense given that it's a video game soundtrack um, for, uh, I believe it's some sort of uh, arcade style of game. Um, like when we checked out video game soundtracks, we looked at 
Um, quite a few songs from modern narrative heavy games uh, like Dark Souls and we checked out Pathologic and it makes sense for those to be very strong compositions on their own. Um, typically because they would be written for a specific section, maybe even a cutscene. But like I said, I believe this is more of an arcade style game. So the music is going to be mostly looped. Um, so the key to writing music like this is more about obtaining that atmosphere and ensuring that the song can deliver the emotion that you want for the section without being too attention seeking because you don't want to pull the player out of that alpha zone uh, you know just really engaging in the act of playing the game and uh, there's definitely a balance there's a skill to that um, when when creating soundtracks for these types of games so the like I said it's heavily loop based heavily repetitious even um, like the fade out that song could have kept going. It was replaying the same three sections over and over and over. Um, and the song just needed to fade out to end the song within the context that it's outside of its context. It is a song being listened to on its own rather than within the context of the game and this boss fight or whatever. So, yeah, there's, there's going to be some repetition there. But there's actually also some really cool things that we can talk about here. First of all, I want to draw a little bit of attention to the combination of chiptune and what sounds very close to real instruments. I don't think many of them were. I'm pretty sure all of these are going to be virtual instruments, but I think they do a very good job of emulating them. I think the biggest offender for that is the trumpets. It sounds close it's very close but there is a couple of moments where i'm like oh that sounds more like a synth that's very close to emulating a trumpet um however those little half valve slides really made me think that we were dealing with real trumpets but i suppose that could also be one of the bend uh wheels that are on you know modern keyboards and stuff like that you can easily kind of emulate that kind of feel and then you can edit it in your DAW to really sell that idea. Um, but yeah, so we have this mix of chiptune, which is mostly prevalent in the percussion. It is that very compressed, not sounding anything like a real drum, uh, bass kick, and whatever the ch is. To me, I kind of get a hi-hat sound out of that, but I could also see in an 8-bit style of uh, writing, 8-bit style of sound, uh, that could also be more of a, sn a snare sound. Um, I continuously called it a hi-hat throughout the song, but thinking back on it, it could very well have been a snare as well. Um, and of course, that is, to me, the most video gamey aspect of the music and not just because it's chiptune but also because it really has that forward momentum drive a lot of it is these offbeat snare or hi-hat hits that really constantly push the song forward it is not on the back beat it's not on the beat it's always you know just getting to the next one you played your note already well i'm already moving to that next beat and it feels like it's it's ahead of everybody it's really dragging everyone behind them to keep up with it it provides just a ton of momentum and energy to the whole song. And there are definitely moments where I feel it's out of place. <laughs> uh, that, that piano solo with that offbeat snare hit, hi-hat hit, constantly going. It has kind of that ska punk feel against that very nice classical piano solo. Uh, to me, that grinds a little bit, but I mean... I, I can't take away points for creativity, that's for sure. <laughs> this is a very creative track. Um, it, it just mixes a lot of cool ideas, even if I don't think they all necessarily work together. Um, uh, what's another? Th oh, we move between like an electric guitar and a keyboard, or what sounds to be like a piano. Um, it's actually a very, if it is virtual, it's a very nice sound. I, I really enjoy that piano. Um, sound that's in here. 
uh, we move into trumpets. Uh, it's kind of all over the place. And it's interesting to kind of hear all of the different changes. I mentioned at the beginning, I want to talk about this before I forget, because it is the beginning, and it is one of the few sections that did not repeat. Um, I mentioned at the beginning that there was some really nice dynamic rhythmic elements going on. And what I meant by that was we had very quick uh, synth or piano something. It, it sounded like hard malleted instruments. It could, I mean, it could also have been, uh, you know, like a xylophone uh, as well. I don't know. I can't remember the exact tone to tell you if it was uh, like a, an electronica sound or if it was trying aiming for more of an acoustic sound. But it was just real rapid. 16th notes, I think, uh, given the tempo, it was probably about 16th notes, just constant, just real fast. Duh, 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 duh. On the lower end of the sound, uh, I don't know what instrument it was, but we had these long notes, half notes, whole notes, just really filling out the low end. And then in the middle, we had a melody line. I don't, again, I don't remember the instrument. Um, it could have been a piano, could have been a, a guitar, it was not the trumpet. Um, but the melody was in the middle. It wasn't playing things as fast as 16th notes, but it wasn't constantly holding out notes either. It was playing a really nice melody, utilizing a variety of note lengths, uh, you know, from eighth notes to half notes. And it's just these nice distinct pockets of speed, uh, length, and then, you know, playing around with both of those ideas sitting around in the middle. And just a fantastic example of utilizing rhythmic elements to differentiate your different elements of the song, your different instruments, your different timbres, your different roles, if you will. Um, just really cool to see that happening on such a prominent, very clear uh, way of doing that. I don't think there was anything else playing there. It was three instruments, all with different rhythmic ideas going on. Um, and also mostly separated in range, too. It was just a, a phenomenal example of how to separate your instruments, not through mix, but through writing. Just really well done. Um, I was a little disappointed to hear that didn't come back, but I think it fits well for an intro and the other three-ish sections. Um, they all worked well together, especially since they all utilized the exact same theme, the same lead melody line, um, and it just worked for those three to loop around the way they did. Speaking of theme, this is a very strong example of reusing music that you've written before in new ways. The piano, the trumpets, and the guitar all play the same melody line, but they all do so with their own little flares. The pianos have those nice little runs. Uh, the trumpets have their beautiful half valve slides that kind of get them around notes. And then the guitar has a little bit of both worlds. It does a little bit of uh, you know, shredding, if you will, it has some of those faster runs that the piano exhibits, but it also has these really nice, ben? did I hear bends? I don't remember now. I don't remember. But again, it was just this really nice mix of the two styles, and they all had the same general idea, but maybe when they went to land on a prominent note, maybe the downbeat of the second bar, it's a held out note. Some of them might have had a grace note into it. Some of them might have had a grace note out of it. Some of them might have had a run into it or run out of it. Um, and it was all different, but familiar. I think that's the key thing is that all of the lead instruments were playing a familiar line, even if it was different um, in its own ways. And that's 100% theme and variation. You take an idea you've already written, give it, it, you don't have to give it to another instrument, but it usually helps to change the timbre and you manipulate it. You toss some notes in, you toss, you take some notes out, maybe you change the chord progression a little bit, create a variation on it, make some variety in the idea. Um, and yeah, this song does that perfectly. Um, and I guess there is a fourth section that kind of uh, moves away from this idea of theme, and that is sort of the impending danger uh, section that changes up a lot of the triumph and adventure, uh, not triumph, adventure. The song oozes with this adventurous go get them, we're gonna go save the world kind of energy. 
but there's that one section that uh, kind of plays around with a little bit more darker colors in the chord progression and introduces some ideas of tension that could, uh, you know, kind of feel like impending danger or, you know, the mission's going wrong kind of idea. And um, I, I mentioned there at the end, I didn't pick it up the first time we ran through it, but on the second time we, we hit that section, I noticed that a lot of the more tense chords that we hit were preceded by very victorious chords and I just thought that was a really nice play to uh, almost feels like these moments of you think that you're going to defeat the boss and then oh wait he busted out a super move or something <laughs> um, and it's it's just I think it, it's a way of um, putting some player emotions kind of the ideas that the uh, some of the emotions or feelings that a player might go through while they're playing through a boss fight into the music itself and um, even if they might not necessarily line up with what's exactly happening it's just really cool to kind of see those dynamics represented in the music itself through the chords and the atmosphere so that's really cool um yeah i think that's going to wrap this one up i really dig this but uh, like I said, it's just a little weak as far as I'm concerned for casual listening. It probably fits very well with the actual, you know, where it fits in the game as a, as a boss fight music background sounds. Um, but the heavily repetitive nature and constant looping of it uh, is just not personally for me as a casual listen. But I do really dig what's going on. The overall sound is phenomenal. I really dig, uh, you know, how the how the composer mixed, uh, you know, electronica and more classical elements, or I, I guess I should say acoustic timbres, uh, electronica and acoustic timbres, um, and then just you know really marvelous ideas on theme and variation. Um, Definitely kept me intrigued on the first time through, but once we hit the loop and we we repeated those three sections, four sections, for the second time, uh, yeah, that was where I was starting to get a little wary, weary, wary. I've said that word too many times. <laughs> I don't know which one is cautious and which one is tired. <laughs> I think it's weary. I was getting a little weary of it. I don't know. They're both sounding weird now. Uh, but yeah, on the second loop, especially once... I mean, like I said, there's a lot of uh, repeating ideas in the theme. So on the second loop, I had already heard that main line three times, and we were hitting the second time of hearing it three times. So that was getting um, on my nerves. Not on my nerves, just... Uh, I was finding myself done with the song, having having heard all that it had to offer. Um, but like I said, as a, as a video game soundtrack, I'm sure it works just fine. Those are my thoughts on this track, Entrusting This World to Idols, Idolatrize, uh, Idolatrize World. I don't think that's a word. <laughs> it rolled off the tongue the first time. It didn't, it didn't make any sense this time, though. <laughs> From uh, the Tohu 17, Toho 17 OST. This is for you guys coming know. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know if you enjoyed it or not. Uh, let me know if you played the game. Uh, or the series of games. I guess this is the 17th in the series. That's a lot of games. Um, and if there's any other tracks I should check out from this. Uh, this comp I think one composer writes every game. If I'm not mistaken, I'm trying to remember that fact. I rem I think someone told me about it, but uh, yeah, I'm not too sure on that one anymore. Anyways, though, hit me up with comments above the comment box is a description box. If you'd like to check out some links adjacent to the channel, such as the Patreon or the Discord channel to chat with the community, chat with me or the Twitter. And there's also a link for special selections. If you have a song you want me to listen to and you just don't want to wait for it to pop up in a theme. That's the way to go about it. You just click that link, follow the instructions, and uh, your name can be popping up on one of these weekends with whatever song you want me to listen to. Until next time, uh, no, that is not what comes next. I'll be back tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC with another special selection. Until next time, 
Remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Thank you.